when you're doing your vocals, when you're recording, are you recording them through your vocal chain live, or are you recording them no, like vocal, dry, dry? I I do them raw. Do you? I do them dry. Yeah. Do you feel like there's a level like if there's a level issue when you do it that way? Like if it's too there low can, in the headphones, there can be. Um, yeah. there can be, and like uh, you know, you can either adjust the input on the microphone depending on like how the room is set up. Yeah. If you don't mind bleed from the rest of the room, then that's really cool, and it can get like a cool effect printed into the sound. A good trick for that is buy yourself some open back headphones so that you can kind of still hear everything else going on and have the input relatively low. Don't hike it up too much. I might I might record into a compressor. Like I, I might do the vocal, the first vocal with no compressor on it, send it through, see how it sounds with the compressor, then take into the compressor for the rest of it, but very few effects. If I'm recording vocals, I want it to sound like the almost the finished version. The way I do it is I'll have my vocal chain, like my live vocal chain there. So I have, you know, compressors or limiter EQs, whatever I have on there. But the routing that I do is so I, I can have the artist in the headphones, hear it as if it's almost like a fully mixed, a fully polished vocal at the end. Yeah. So that way the level's good, it's compressed, it's limited, it's crunchy, it's, it's close to what it's going to sound like as a finished product. But it doesn't print. It's not permanent, though. I'll go and I'll keep my vocal chain and I'll dock it to the left of the mixer. You know how you can dock things to the left and the right with the sends? Yeah. So I'll dock the vocal chain to the left just for visual purposes, right? Then in the mixer side, just a random mixer track, I'll use that as my record track. Mm -hmm. So I'll choose the input say it's input one on this random vocal track i'll name it main vocal but i'll take that vocal and then i will hit route to this track only on the vocal chain so i'll arm that standalone mixer track arm that one mm -hmm. don't arm the vocal chain track because then you'll record and print the vocals with the the effects and you can't go back mm -hmm. so that's the main point of it getting the artist to record with the vocal chain in real time to hear it as as if it's going to be a fully finished product at the end but not have them permanent to the point where you can go back and adjust the compression you can adjust the eq you can adjust the reverb you can adjust all that stuff right so not only that is i'll route to this track only on the vocal chain blank one input number one route to this track only on the vocal chain and then make sure that your vocal chain is routed to the master it probably will be automatically by default but if it's not you're not getting any sound out of it make sure it's routed to the master only so a lot of times it's like damn i don't know what i did because sometimes you're People will click and it can get a little complicated. Mm. People will click it and then it turns it off. Even if you just like left click it, sometimes it, de it, it disconnects it from oh, the master. It's like, damn, where's my sound at? That cable just got disconnected. So again, highlight the vocal chain route to this track only on the master. So yeah. that's your chain right there. You have your input track that's armed to record. Right. Routed to this track only on the vocal chain, then the vocal chain to the master. Is the vocal chain route to this track only to the master, or is it route to this track? The input track? The uh, the vocal chain track. The vocal chain is just going to the master. So route to that only. That only. Yeah, route yeah. to this track only. Because then it'll double print. Because it'll signal. double. Yeah. yeah, got it. Got and you'll it. get like weird phasing. You're like, what the hell was this phasing coming right, from? Because right, right. you, you can essentially send that to two places, and then you hear... You're routing your vocal chain to another track that's also going to the master. You're, <laughs> but it becomes a mess. It can be complicated. So that's the specific chain. Mm -hmm. Input track, arm to record, route to the vocal chain, vocal chain to the master. And then you'll hear your vocals loud and clear, crispy with the effects on them, compression, limiting, all that. But the one that records into the playlist is raw. Mm -hmm. So you can essentially mute the track. And the yeah. cool thing about that is, is that when you record that into the playlist, it automatically assigns itself to the mixer track that you armed. Right. Because you did that. Then do you take the, uh, the vocal chain and just take that entire stack to that raw input track? No, then? you just leave it because it's already you routed. It. Oh, because it's already in there. So when yeah, you're yeah. mixing, you just leave it as is. Yeah, yeah. And then if I have another vocal take, I'm starting a new track, dubs. So essentially, I'm, I made a bunch of templates before where it's like, you know, it's already set up like that. Mm -hmm. So I go in and I have a template in my mixer that's already set up like that, ready to go with the vocal chain, right. blank inputs, a, bl a bunch of blank inputs that says maybe main, dub, ad lib, hook, hook one, hook two, left, right, center, all that stuff. Mm. Like kind of just so it's quick and easy, ready to go. And all I have to do is arm it and maybe change the input on those tracks as I'm going. Valid. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that, um, I just became so quick at recording in the studio and everybody would just hear a consistent level. And which is what a lot of times when an artist, they don't know that they want that sometimes. Yeah. I mean, you do because uh, you might may or not want it. You know, you might not even want that. 
but you know what you're talking about when you go in because you do this, right? You do FL, you do production, mixing, tracking. But an artist, when they come in, sometimes they're like, I just can't hear myself. I need it louder. Yeah, but what sure. they really think is like, what, what they're really saying is, I need compression. I need, I need an EQ. I need a limiter. I need limiter my gain. You know, because you get into this thing where somebody's really loud or really low mm. when, they, when they record. And that's their natural. That's what they're at. So you have to compensate either way without clipping the signal. Yeah. So you, you run this like fine line in between. So that's another thing that just helps. That's how I do that in FL. I think it makes it more comfortable for the artist too. Mm -hmm. Like when you can just walk in, you sound crispy in the headphones, especially if you're just like able to hear your voice. You got a little bit of delay on there as well. It just, it sets the vibe right. And I think that when you're recording vocals, it's so important that you get the vibe, the tone, and yeah. you capture that right away. So that, you know, you're not like messing stressing. around. Yeah, you're not and stressing. You don't want to have to stress your vocal. If you have headphones that aren't open back headphones and you're recording and the signal is low and it's raw yeah. and you can't hear yourself, now you're stressing your vocal cords. Now you're, you're, at, you're in a different tone than you would have normally been in when you, yeah. uh, that you maybe envisioned in your head beforehand. Yeah. The tone that you deliver when you're like recording like the take for the song is going to be different than when, you f when you're performing it. And like you... you it's not, that, it's not that you don't want to be performing the vocal. It's that it's a different type of performance. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like a, a tone. Like you said, you're in a different, a different tonal yep. quality. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And uh, before that, you mentioned also having like a reverb or a delay. And what I forgot to mention, even in that chain is, so you can have a, a vocal, um, you can have a delay and a reverb send off, you know, to the right if you have them already set up. Uh, and then you can also route that track to there and it won't print that either. So, but you wouldn't do route to this track only on those reverb sends or delays. Mm. So say you have like dock to the right. The way I do it is I have, you know, my vocal chain dock to the left. All of my tracks that I'm going to be tracking with or like mixing with later are going to be in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then dock to the right, I have my effect sends. And 99 times out of 100, it's just delay and a reverb send that are separate. So then if I have my chain, it's, you know, that, that tracking track is routed to that as well but not routed to this track only just, just left just the left click you can all you have to do is click left click oh shit yeah make sure that the input track is highlighted then go over to the bottom of your send and just click the little arrow down at the bottom with a regular I'm mouse i'm imagining click. the graphics just going yeah <laughs> yeah it's perfect yeah. you click me yeah i can see it right there <laughs> yeah